With this aircraft, what we learned, uh, having modified both aircraft, is that this aircraft lent itself to certain characteristics for our mission that made this the aircraft of choice for us. The other genesis, and maybe the most significant, was our partnership with Thrush Aircraft. Um, we are now partnered with them, and this is a joint effort led by IOMAX, um, where we get to work on the production line, uh, hand in hand with the manufacturer, and uh, co-develop the aircraft, as well as when we finish it at its factory in North, or excuse me, in Albany, Georgia, we bring the aircraft to North Carolina, to IOMAX's headquarters area, where we have a finishing facility for all the modifications and integration. Uh, the aircraft's concept is, it's a low entry point aircraft in relationship to cost. It uh, has a low life cycle cost, which is, we think, one of the most significant things for an operator, is over the life cycle, how much will this cost to maintain and to operate? and it's extraordinarily low. Uh, it further lends itself and its durability for a mission that governments would use. We'll talk about some of those missions, but just because it is based on an agricultural airplane, it has characteristics that allows it to land on rough fields, to be operated in environments that are um, less than conducive for very sophisticated aircraft. Uh, we went further then at that point Due to the fact that it's agricultural, it was designed to lift very heavy loads, which led to the wing designs being how they are. Uh, there is a lot of wing area on the aircraft, which means we can lift very heavy payloads, uh, which we've translated into both fuel, sensors, and weapons. Those are all combinations that can be put on the aircraft um, to give it a multi-mission role. In any one of those single missions, though, it's a very effective airplane. Okay. And what are the different kind of missions it can be used for? It's, it's known and coined as a BPA, or a Border Patrol aircraft. And that's based on its endurance and the basic sensors on board. So it can fly for an extraordinarily long time up and down or around borders, coast, coastal, mountainous, uh, flatlands, jungle, it doesn't matter. The endurance is extremely long uh, in relationship to fuel. And then the sensor packages to do that, uh, usually based on an electro-optical and uh, infrared system or EOIR uh, to do the visual surveillance component. Uh, with that mission of Border Patrol, you could also translate that into pipeline patrol, power line patrol, coastal patrol. It could be used for fisheries or fire spotting or a whole host of missions in relationship to border security or missions that just need a long endurance aircraft with sensors on it. How do it compare in terms of acquisition cost? and operating cost, the Beechcraft 86 and the Embraer uh, uh, you know, attack aircraft? Well, I think for each customer's application, they'll figure it out to the bottom line dollar. But generally, the aircraft is significantly across all spectrums in life cycle and operating cost significantly less than those aircraft. Um, the complexities involved in ejection seats and retractable landing gear and the other things in those aircraft add a dynamic cost to the cost of life cycle of that aircraft. The other thing that's significant related to those is that you need a much larger logistics tail um, to support the complexities of gear failures and the ejection seat maintenance and, and so on and so on, which make this aircraft much more conducive to another thing outside of those components um, cost is the personnel that you need to support that. The final piece of that would be that those aircraft normally would be operated from areas that are fairly well supported where this aircraft due to the ruggedness of its landing gear and systems can be operated off ex very rough environments and also maintained and um, based in 
in areas that don't have a lot of support. Yeah. Could you just, is this possible to give a ballpark figure of the costs involved in maintaining it, say on a five-hour mission on a daily basis or a month month period? Well, the the the, the scenario that some folks will will attempt to do that with, I think, is slightly flawed because it really it matters what sensors you're going to have on board. Uh, what weapons you're going to have with the aircraft, if you're a strike type weaponized aircraft, um, what regions you're going to be operating in, and so on and so forth. But I think as we sit down with any customer and he evaluates those costs uh, that he's going to do for, for their mission against the cost that it would be for those other aircraft, we'll see a significant reduction across every mission. You just mentioned it doesn't have an ejection seat. Yes, sir. Does not does it uh, does it impact on safety in any way? What happens if the plane crashes? It's a great question. Um, one of the things I, I would say to start setting the stage stage for that is due to those other aircraft are monocog aircraft design with very great safety features, up to and including those ejection seats. This aircraft is extraordinarily rugged, and if you ever look at some of the statistics of uh, post-crash analysis of this tubular airframe, you'll see phenomenal survival rates where most aircraft would, there'd be no possibility of, I shouldn't say no possibility. There should be significant injury of the crew, and crews have walked away from these tubular airframes, uh, and folks can look those things up. Um, with that said, the next piece of that is ejection seats are fundamentally a, a great idea. Um, if we look at the number of fixed-wing aircraft that have actually been shot down, it's fairly low. Um, and with that said, folks that operate helicopters, operate King Airs, or operate caravans, uh, none are flying with ejection seats, and their safety records are phenomenal. Um, so although there's merit in, a, in an ejection seat, uh, one we all hope they're not used, the other is they're very infrequently used, and the cost and complexity behind them at a phenomenal cost to the support of the aircraft. Uh, and lastly, based on the characteristics this aircraft has in virtually any fair controlled environment where the aircraft goes down, there's a high survivability rate for the crew. Okay, and uh, what kind of markets do you think this has potential in? You... We think the market is broadly uh, uh, based because there's a, uh, in the concept of the aircraft, there's a void between what a helicopter can do, what an aircraft for intelligence surveillance or reconnaissance like a King Air could do, and what a fast-moving strike aircraft should, could do, such as a Tornado, an F-15, uh, and so on. And this is a perfect niche airplane that actually has all the best characteristics of all of them. The only one notwithstanding is speed. However, that's countered by the enormity of the endurance that this airplane can have on site over uh, supporting uh, whether it's law enforcement or troops or whether it's just the endurance it needs to fly up and down borders or whatever type of mission. Um, so we think it's a very broad, broad base and a big niche where this aircraft fits where nothing else can do all the capabilities it brings in one package. Yes. So we do all the integration um, and make an archangel out of it. So as far as the weapons that are qualified on it, the Hellfire and the LGB are qualified on it. And then Rakasan in January we did a proof of concept with them. Okay. And then a couple months ago we started the qual program for it. Okay, which means it's going to be sold in uh, Turkey? Yeah. Okay. Okay, the next, next you can just yep. on so on the uh, MX-15 uh, camera. IR, day and night camera and laser designator. Okay. As well as laser range finder. Okay. Engine's a PT6-67. Okay. And then the Hartzell five bladed prop. Okay.
And what missiles are these? Uh, this is LBG. It's a uh, MK81. Yes. And then it has the 2.75 rockets on the bottom. Okay. And then this is another uh, product from uh, Rockasan that uh, is more for uh, hardened bunkers and that type of thing. Okay. Based on a CMC Ester line. Yeah. So it's a 3 2 multifunction display with full reversion area between all the instruments. Yeah. Has the controls over here for FMS and uh, other avionics functions. And then on the bottom has HUD controls. Um, autopilot's a uh, 3 axis uh, 55X SkyTech. Uh, Becker Digital Audio Communications. Okay. Um, dual controls. The M this is the camera controls for the MX-15 front and back. Basically very simple layout. Yeah. How does the fire control system work? What controls the missiles and the IR? So that's uh, in the back is the weapons control officer. Okay. So on the back panel they have a multifunction display like this. Okay. And then they also have a larger 12 inch display on okay. the side. Okay. So the multifunction display can display any instrument, any instrumentation that's up here. They can toggle through. Okay. And then on the camera on the side, we'll display the camera and the crosshairs and use that to get the weapon solution. Okay. Um, and that's the uh, primary mission from the back. Also has a video downlink, a BMS video downlink in okay. the back. Uh, airplane is certified up to 22,000, so we have the on-demand oxygen system Okay. as part of the installation. Um, actually has dual controls in the front and the back capability, so you know, the stick and the rudder, pedals, all the engine instrumentations, engine controls and trim, we just took those out for the air show just to make it a little easier to get in and out of the back okay, of the airplane. Okay. Oh, so basically it's simple. You just mentioned air tractors. The 802Us. Okay. And uh, those were the first, uh, kind of the block one and block two mm -hmm. of our development program. And this is kind of the block three of that evolution. So it took kind of lessons learned from block one, block two, and then integrate it and kind of come in with the concept for our game. Okay. So right now it's flying with the customer, right? Correct. It's now in operation with the customer, in yeah. these, with these weaponized layout? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so we delivered the 24th airplane this month. Mm. Um, Okay. So then that's the, kind of like I said, and then this is the, the evolution for our block three. Okay, good. Well, I think that's.